everything about this IEM made me smile. Referencing a classic sci-fi trilogy instead of the usual pair of questionable soap opera-esque anime girls to the fact that they're actually trying to solve one, maybe even two problems. This is the Moondrop Droplet. Now, for those of you who don't know, the shape of the Moondrop Droplet is inspired by the spaceship in The Three-Body Problem, a three-book trilogy by Chinese author Xi Jin Lu. I might be butchering that name, I apologize. But if you haven't read it, I highly recommend reading it. You've got to read it all the way through, even though the best bit is at the very end of the third book. It's, it's an experience for various reasons. Now, the inspiration is clear throughout the packaging, from the artwork to that metal tag, I'm not sure what that's all about, to just all the references sprinkled throughout the packaging. Now, I'm not one for using that much packaging material for the environment, but I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't enjoy unboxing this one. Included in the box are the IEMs themselves with a set of foam tips. These IEMs have a non-detachable cable that terminates in USB-C, and that termination has a built-in digital-to-analog converter and an inline microphone. So this is really a complete one-and-done solution. The Moondrop Droplet is a sleek metal affair whose shape is true to its inspiration and might just be one of the smallest IEMs that I have ever used. Fortify that with a nozzle diameter of about 5.5 millimeters and you've got something that is truly suitable for those of us with smaller ears. It is a double-edged sword though, because small, sleek and slick also meant it was a little bit difficult to handle, a little bit difficult to actually affix in one's ear, at least for the more ham-fisted amongst us. But when you do, the foam tips do provide a pretty decent seal, although compared to a lot of IEMs, I found myself questioning whether the insertion depth was right or not. Turns out I didn't have to worry. Now, before we go further, it is worth mentioning that the cable does have a fair bit of microphonics, so I would recommend that you loop it over your ear instead of just let it hang, which helps things somewhat. Another thing worth mentioning, though, is that left and right are all but indistinguishable. There is a marking at the very termination of the cable, but it's barely visible. Just remember, the mic is on the right. And now we get to the good bit. How does this thing sound? For audiophiles, you've seen the tuning before. It looks like this. I know that looks weird. And it's a single balanced armature, which is also weird. How good could it possibly be? Well, I think you'll be surprised. I think Moondrop is experimenting a bit here. I'm gonna start by saying the Moondrop droplet takes EQ like an absolute champ. You can EQ this to sound like pretty much anything, including your neighbor's cat. I know, I've tried. It worked. But what's important is that frequency response. See that massive bass rise? I think Moondrop had to do that because when I EQ'd it down to Harman, yeah, down to Harman, it actually sounded more like a balanced armature driver. But when I left it in stock, it sounds thick, it sounds meaty, it has body to it like you're not used to. And I think the only way to achieve that was a massive bass boost that, to my mind, even distorts the bass a little bit in order to achieve that effect. And then you've got a mid-range, which has a little bit of warmth, but not so much that it affects all genres of music. And then you've got that really weird peak at 3 kilohertz. Usually you don't see something that rises up that linearly. The fact that it rises up linearly is a good thing. It means it sounds nice and smooth. A 3 kilohertz peak is sort of the appropriate place, depending on who you ask. And then you've got this steep fall-off. And while that peak is quite high, it's the fall-off that prevents this IEM from ever getting harsh or sibilant or offensive in any way. And then you've got a little bit of energy in the treble as well. So what you're left with is vocals that are reasonably forward and sound really nice without ever sounding sharp or unbalanced and you've got a bass that is really thick and meaty the way you like from a dynamic driver and all of that from a balanced armature. And I'll say this, I didn't hear much of that metallic timbre that people talk about with this balanced armature, probably as a result of this tuning. So then what happens is when you're listening to pop or EDM and all kinds of genres of music where it doesn't have too much energy in the lower mids, then what you get is nice thumpy bass, really fun, and you get a lot of presence in the mid range without overemphasizing that sort of five to seven kilohertz region, which is associated with sharpness. But then when you switch to rock and heavy metal, which has a lot of energy in the lower mids, what with all that overdriven guitar and the husky growling into the mic, this actually performs well there as well. You've got a little bit of muddiness in the vocals, but you have that additional warmth, which gives a sort of heft to the heavier tracks that I don't hear from a lot of Harman 
tuned IEMs. Now, I'm not saying that's the way it should be. I think that's more just a product of what I grew up listening to, the kind of speakers I grew up listening to and whatnot. But it's undeniable that Iron Maiden, Megadeth, all of the heavier tracks, they sound heavier with this IEM. But when you switch to pop, it doesn't have enough of that warmth and muddiness to ruin all the other genres. So what you've got effectively is something that's actually working for various genres of music and working pretty decently. Now, I'll be the first one to say the Moondrop Droplet is not the last word in detail and resolution and all those things. And if I'm being honest, the bass, if it's anything more than a kick drum, it does seem to lose its attack and lose its poise a little bit. But I think you kind of need that to get this sort of fun bass out of a single balanced armature. And that was what Moondrop was going after. Which means that this whole frequency response was done on purpose. Maybe I'm being charitable, maybe Moondrop's just throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks, but I'm gonna give them the benefit of doubt because when I tried to EQ it, I did lose presence in the bass, I did lose that warmth and heft in the heavy metal, although the upper mid-range, even if I emphasized it to harmony, it didn't sound metallic, it didn't sound sharp or anything like that. It was pretty okay. So there you have it, the Moondrop droplet, surprisingly decent sounding and surprisingly versatile for a number of genres. Now the problem is, in the sub $50 category, there is a lot of good competition, really good sounding IEMs these days. You've got the Tangzu 1R, the Hola, the Truthia Critical Zero, the HBB Khan, which I haven't reviewed that one yet. They said they're sending me one. I'm waiting. Obviously, this is the part where I ask you to subscribe so you can follow me on those reviews as well. Thank you, by the way. Also, I've started YouTube memberships and a Patreon. I'll leave the links down below. It's only a dollar a month. That's all I want. Just more people, one dollar a month will do the trick. Easy on you, easy on me, you get it. Anyway, which makes the Moondrop offering uh, but a droplet in the ocean, if you'll pardon the pun. But here's the thing. None of those IEMs that I'm talking about will fit smaller ears. And I think that's the selling point here. The Moondrop Droplet is one of the few IEMs sub $50 that will actually fit smaller ears and give you decent, maybe even good sound quality, depending on what you're comparing with. Plus, it has an inline microphone and it eliminates the need to have a little dongle, which makes it actually a reasonable offering for a lot of people who have smaller ears. I also think it's a bit of a lost opportunity. See, the whole point of Bluetooth earbuds is that you get to cut the wire, but also you get to store EQ on board. Now, if you've got an IEM that's connected to a little DAC of its own that's doing its DSP things, you could do more things. You could include Fletcher Munson curves. Not that this would be needed for this IEM with its tuning, but in the future for a more neutralish sounding IEM, you could subtly increase the bass and treble as the person reduces volume because you can enjoy your music at lower volumes if you've got isolating foam tips, right? May as well save your ears, but still enjoy your music. Why not? You could also make it so that you could include parametric EQ. Maybe a little software support. You upload a parametric EQ and maybe save a few different targets and EQs and switch between them with a little physical button. There's so many things that you can do once you start introducing electronics that I think that maybe, Moondrop, if you're watching, maybe we should talk. I think more can be done and I think more should be done with these DSP IEMs coming out. So then the question is, would you buy it or would you recommend it to someone you know who wants to get into audiophilia but has smaller ears and it's just not catered to tell me in the comments below obviously and do remember to hit that subscribe button because i will see you in the next video stay happy stay peaceful stay colorful namaste